MicroSD cards are a cheap, easy to acquire and use solution for expanding storage on numerous devices, including the Steam Deck. But there's a lot of misconceptions and maybe even a little misinformation being passed around regarding our beloved handheld, and I figured it might make an interesting topic to cover. Let's check it out. Demystification number one, all cards are created equally. Now, we're going to address fake and bad cards later, but this statement couldn't be further from the truth. Even when speed ratings and specs appear to be the same on paper, there are many things to consider, including warranty and build quality. A trustworthy company is going to warranty their cards well, while a sketchy one may likely have little to no warranty. Build quality can impact so many things like heat tolerances and lifetime rights. Obviously, this is hard for a consumer to determine, but sticking with a known name brand like SanDisk or Samsung will likely ensure you're getting something worth using. Demystification number two, SD cards are a good solution to replacing the SSD. There's a partial truth to this, but there's a lot of factors being ignored with this statement. First, while the SD card read speeds are usually on par with the SSD, with a quality card anyway, the write speeds are usually considerably slower, anywhere from 6 to 20 times slower or more. Some people say they don't care about that, but we're going to talk about why they should care in just a moment. Second, people assume Steam Deck isn't like Windows and never installs anything on the internal storage if they elect to install it on the SD card. If you've ever installed Microsoft Office on Windows and try to put it on a non-C drive, you know that while you can install Office on your D drive, tons of the install goes to the C drive regardless. Steam Deck is no different. If you buy a 64 gigabyte Steam Deck, you better have immediate plans to upgrade the internal SSD. A micro SD card is not the solution, especially a big one, oddly enough, which leads us to our next topic. Demystification number three, Size doesn't matter, the bigger the better. Let's start with the obvious issue. People want to spend as least amount of money as possible and get as big of cars as possible. There's nothing wrong with that. But it can lead to some very poor decision making. More storage with slower, less quality cards can make a huge difference in downloading, patching, and longevity. A lot of people will take a slower 1.5 terabyte SanDisk Ultra card over a one terabyte SanDisk Extreme just for the extra space especially when they have so very little space on the internal SSD, like a 64 gigabyte SKU. But the more you install on your SD card, the more collateral stuff like proton prefixes and shaders and requisites are being installed to your SSD. You're trying to solve your limited space internally, but you're actually making it worse by adding too big of a card and installing more. Oddly, giant storage cards eventually end up giving you more to lose when it dies. And the large size makes you not want to back it up or image it with any sort of cadence, which everybody should probably be doing periodically because of our next topic. Demystification number four, there is nothing on the SD card I can't afford to lose if it dies. That might be true, but in my experience, for most deck owners, it is not true. The common reason given for not doing backups or making copies and or images is that there is nothing on the SD card they can't afford to lose. After all, there is just games on there, right? And you can easily just re-download them again if something goes wrong with the card. That's true. But most people don't consider how long that could take to replace 800 to 1500 gigabytes of content. The Steam Deck isn't known for being a downloading speed demon after all, and local network sharing isn't really as fast as it could be. But even if that is true, it is my experience that people have more on there than just game binaries. These include things like game mods, some of which are a huge pain to apply, or custom INI files hand-tooled to make the games run better. God forbid you have your emulation folder on there with all your emulators, ROMs, and BIOS, often crafted at great personal time and effort. Have you ever scraped 17,000 emulation titles for artwork and media? Hours, days, or even weeks of effort are sitting on that fragile SD card, waiting patiently for end of days. We see it all the time on Reddit with headlines like hundreds of hours lost on my dead SD card. Maintaining a backup or image of that card, strongly recommended, especially if you have a crappy or quoted internet, or if you put a lot of love into the customizations there. And if you're running Windows off that SD card, backups should be mandatory. Demystification number five, speed doesn't matter since the deck is capped. 
Ah, yes, the old ST guard doesn't matter because the deck speeds are capped at 104 megabytes per second. One of my favorites. This is usually a statement used to justify not buying a quality card because it doesn't matter anyway. We'll save the technical jargon for another video, but let's take two popular cards from SanDisk, the Ultra 1.5 terabyte and the Extreme 1 terabyte. Now, these stats are all taken off of SanDisk's Amazon store, by the way. Let's start with that Ultra card. The read speeds are up to 150 megabytes per second. We're gonna talk more about up to in a minute. However, the write speeds are up to 50 megabytes per second. Yeah, that's a big number change, right? Technically speaking for read operations, since it exceeds 104 megabytes per second, we should be good, right? And we'll get back to that. What about the specs on the extreme card? 190 megabytes per second reading, and you ready for this? Up to 130 megabytes per second of writing, damn. Now let's talk about what up to means. That's legalese for you're never gonna see it that fast regardless of device. <laughs> so in order to actually see the difference, we're gonna need to run a benchmark on the deck itself, of course, on both. Reddit user Flaster Crackets has done the legwork for us. Let's see what that looks like. The Extreme outperforms the Ultra on pretty much every level, including reading, which is why you can't trust the up to numbers. The extreme at 93 megabytes per second is closer to the max 104 megabyte speed that the deck is capable of. And while 83 megabytes per second isn't anything to scoff at, this completely debunks the myth that read speeds don't matter between cards because they do. Of course, the data is rarely sequential, right? Looking at the random reads, well, they both suck, but at least the extreme has a good healthy 10% lead over the ultra. Why do I not recommend the ultra and always recommend the extreme? It's because of the writing speeds. Looking at the benchmarks is all you need to do. 50 to 100% better write speeds across the board, even with the dreaded random writing. You need to care about writes for two reasons, downloading and patching. Downloading from a web browser and downloading a game from Steam are very different evolutions. What's more, patching a game for an update is a brutal process where random write speeds are very important. If you take a game like Baldur's Gate 3 and put it on an SD card, the patching process could take almost forever because of the random write speeds. Now imagine it being 50 to 100% plus slower on the Ultra card. People already complain about the number of updates now, imagine them taking double the time to do so. Yep, just pass on the Ultra, get the extreme. Demystification number six. Steam Deck not formatting a card does not mean there's something wrong with it. Technically this is true but I feel more data is required to understand this properly. Most devices, including those that run Windows, do not properly format drives when they're asked. They perform what is known as a quick format because real formats take a long time and they assume that the card is good and you just want it to appear wiped and reused. There are full formatting features on most devices, but you have to do something special to make that happen. On the deck, it does a proper deep format each and every time, making 100% sure that the storage device is actually good and not bad or fake. If your deck fails to format the card, Houston, we have a problem. That is true probably 98% of the time. I have seen some weird ass edge cases where you're able to use another deep formatting method and it works, but the odds are in favor of that card having something wrong with it. People love to ignore the warning signs of their SD card being bad or failing. I get it. Nobody wants to do a messy return and wait for a new card. But do you want to find out about it right now that there's a problem with the card or after you put hundreds of hours curating the ultimate emulation collection or spend 100 plus hours downloading 500 gigabytes of data only to find out your one terabyte card is really a fake 512 gigabyte one? It is reasonably safe to assume that if the deck won't format it, you need a return and you cannot trust it moving forward. Demystification number seven. There is no difference installing a game internally than on the SD card. 100% not true. You should have figured that out by now. The internal storage is going to be exponentially faster writing and still faster reading. Download time, patching updates time, and even load time and performance of games that stream assets during play can be impacted. Now granted, in most cases, most cases, Load and play times are within a margin of error, but when you have to do a 37 gigabyte patch on your 130 gigabyte game on your SD card, you're gonna wish you installed that internally. Demystification number eight. I bought the card on Amazon, so I know it isn't fake. Another one of my favorites. There's no way the card could have a problem because the user bought it at Best Buy, Walmart, Amazon, fill in the blank store here. 
Simple fact is, being new is not proof against a manufacturing defect or issue out of the box. It's just possible for something to be DOA out of the box. Doesn't matter where you buy it. Now, I can honestly say I've never had a DOA one out of the box, but it doesn't mean it cannot happen to you. Now, what has happened to me? A fake rebranded counterfeit card sold and shipped directly to me by Amazon. Of course, eBay, AliExpress, others are all loaded with fake and fraudulent and bad cards for resale. Buying at a local brick and mortar gives you the advantage of being able to return it immediately if you encounter any issue formatting the card on the deck. And you probably should, based on the previous topic. Amazon has a great return policy, but it seems to be getting harder and longer, giggity, to get returns done from Amazon. So what did you think? Any of this new to you? What did I miss talking about with regards to micro SD cards? Leave a comment down below and while you're there, we always appreciate your like. If you enjoy our content, consider subscribing and tapping that bell for us. I'm Shane Armonroe. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, take care.